disappointed. He had, he had come to this country to tell the people about Jesus. They, they, they were a primitive country. Stone Age. Had no nice amenities. They lived in stick huts. Hunted with spears and knives that they had sharpened out of stone. You see, William loved Jesus, and as he went to church, he uh, heard the Great Commission. The preacher would stand and say, Go into all the world and preach the gospel, make disciples. And he really felt that God was moving in his heart to do that, to respond to that challenge, so that's what he did. He looked on the map and thought, where could I go? Where could I have influence? Where could I be an impact for Christ? His attention was drawn to this country. Yeah, the people, they, they were primitive. And, and, and he was from Canada. But he really, really felt impressed to go to this country that where the people were very, very primitive in Stone Age. So he made the provisions. He packed everything together. He knew that he wouldn't be able just to drive into the situation he knew that even with a jeep, there'd be no way to get into this country. He would have to backpack everything in, and, and then they would have to airdrop his supplies. So he was all excited because Bill, or William, but we'll just call him Bill, Bill was, was going to tell these people that Jesus loved them. He was going to tell these people that God cared for them. He was going to tell these people that there was salvation in Jesus. Got all of his provisions together. What he could carry in. What they could airdrop in. He got in there and the first thing that he did was he went to the chief. And he says, I want to be your friend. Now, they didn't understand his language, and he tried to do some things like put his arm around their shoulder, and they looked at him, scowled at him. He tried to draw some pictures in the sand of, of two men coming together and, and having big smiles on their faces. He tried doing these things here to show that he was a friend, and that he was going to be here for a while. And what he would do is he would got his axe and he was clearing out the bushes. And he made himself a nice little camp. The backpack was up there. Yeah, his knife was there. He didn't want to show the knife too often because he didn't want these people to think that he was an enemy. But he used it to uh, skin the, the animals that he caught, the fish that he caught. That was a nice little camp. He thought he was doing pretty good. And William, Bill, had been here for several months. And now he was learning how to communicate with them. He would draw pictures and he would keep telling them that they were friends. And you know what? There would be times that he would in invite people over. He always gave them the best seat. You see, his grandma gave him this lawn chair. And he brought it with him. One of the luxuries of living in this primitive country. And when those people would come, he said, Please sit in the favorite chair. And he would sit down on an old crate or a box. And he would talk to them. Once they realized that
Bill was going to be there for a while, they would come over and they would try to communicate and Bill was starting to learn some of their words. Finally, he thought, I need to tell them the real reason I am here. So he gathered them all together and he says, I want to tell you about the Great Spirit. I want to tell you about God. You see, we've all done wrong things. Now, this primitive people, they were accustomed to killing people. They were accustomed to even eating people. They were filled with hate. They were, they were filled with murder. And Bill was saying, you know, we've all done wrong things, but Jesus, God's Son, came and he paid the price. He was nailed on a cross. And all of the men that were sitting around the camp, Bill, what's nail? See, they'd never seen a nail before. And uh, Bill says, well, it, it's a, a little piece of hard metal. And yeah, it's a little piece of hard thing that's really, really sharp and it would go through a man and hold him on a tree. <laughs> they laugh because they had never seen a nail before. How could a little tiny piece of something hard hold a man on a tree? Couldn't figure it out. And again, Bill would gather his 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 friends now around his camp. And they would bring him some food and they would sit down and he would eat. And he goes, and Jesus was nailed on a cross because he loves you. They, they laughed again. Oh, what's a nail? Now, in Canada, Bill knew exactly what a nail was. He had nail boards together. He had little tiny nails and he had big nails. And now, here, in this country where he really believed God had directed him, this was, this was all he wanted to do was to tell the people that Jesus died on the cross. He was nailed on a cross. And now they didn't even understand the story because they couldn't figure out what a nail was. Yeah. William came back to his camp and he was so discouraged. Maybe I didn't hear from God. Maybe I got mixed up here. Maybe I shouldn't have come to this country as a missionary. Maybe I should have done something else. Maybe I should have gone someplace else where at least they know what a nail was, but he really felt that this was what he needed to do. But now, how could he tell them that God loved them? How could he tell them that Jesus took their place because he was nailed on a cross when they wouldn't even figure out, when they didn't even know what a nail was? Well, he was waiting anxiously for the airdrop. And they dropped it out of the sky. They had a parachute and they would lower it down. And, and all of his friends now from this country, they're all excited because in the airdrop, there would be like buttons and there would be ribbons and, and uh, even some sharp knives or even an ax, which they really, really liked because it was a whole lot better than an old stone piece of uh, uh, stone ax. And so when the airplane would come in and drop the airdrop, all of his friends now would gather around. What's in the crate? What are we going to get? And Bill was thinking, what supplies will I have today? Well, the airdrop came and all of his friends gathered around him and he grabbed the crate and they brought it into the area there. And <laughs> yeah, Bill would like hang up the old 
parachutes, kind of makes sort of like a tent. Ah, uh, well, Bill brought the crate back to the camp there, and everybody was excited, so he opened up the crate. Ah, there was some new things in there. There was a, a blanket. There was a clean shirt. And as he went through the crate, and at the bottom of it, somebody had sent him a can of pop. Oh, man, has he ever missed a can of pop. So he opened it up there. Oh, it was good. He offered it to his other friends. He says, he says, do you want to try this? And they, oh, they made a face because they weren't used to like the sweet water. They would much prefer to just get the water from the river and drink it. But Bill, can of pop, man, this is like cold water on a hot day. This was like an oasis. Somebody was thinking about him. Here he was in this country where there was no running water and there was no electricity and there was no telephones. But somebody had given him a can of pop. <laughs> he continued to drink it. As he was finishing the can, something rattled. What was it? So he, he quickly dumped it out here. It, it was a, a, a nail. How did that ever get in that can of pop? Way back in Canada. A, a nail. And so he called all of his friends back together again. And he says, he says, friends. He says, chief. He says, this is a nail. Nail. What he did was, he took the, the, the chief's hand, and he took that nail, and he began to burn it into the skin of the hand of the chief. And the chief pulled, the chief pulled back his hand. He says, she says, chief. Hold out your hand again. And once more, he put it in there. All the other warriors, they were laughing. And so Bill went around to each one of them. And he took that nail and he began to burn it into their hand just so there was enough pain. And they would pull back. And then Bill did this. Back in his tent, he got out his, his axe. And he pounded the nail into a tree. And then he said to the chief, pull it out. The chief came and made faces and couldn't do it. All the other warriors lined up and they tried to pull the nail out. They couldn't do it. And Bill said, they took a nail and they took something heavy and they drove it right through Jesus' hand. And when they did that, he was nailed on a cross for all the bad things that we've done. He was nailed there. The nails went right through his hands and they couldn't pull it out. Well, all of the men gathered around. And once more, Bill said, you know what? God loves you. Jesus was nailed on a cross. He took your place. All the wrong things that we've done, all the sins that we've done. Jesus was nailed on the cross 
Because he loves you. Well, from that moment on, things begin to change and the people, his friends would gather around his camp and they were listening more and more to their stories. Yeah, they would bring him food and Bill was realizing this is where God wants me to be and however long it takes me, I am going to serve God here. But he kept thinking, how? How did that nail get in that can of pop? Well, all he could say was, it was a miracle that that nail got in that can of pop. I don't know how to do it, but God, you provided that nail so that these people who've never heard about you except when I came here, these people learned about you. God, I want to thank you. As Bill stayed there in that country, and as his friends gathered around the camp, they learned that God loves them. And Bill stayed there for the sake of a nail.